My first car was this hand-me-down 2005 Ford Expedition. It was in fantastic shape inside and out and had relatively low miles but quite a few electrical gremlins. After a few years and pretty much every kind of check engine light, I was looking for something different. I had always admired pickup trucks, both for their utility and really just the style. At this time I was really just getting into cars and wasn't confident getting an older or higher mileage model. Eventually I found this truck, a 2007 Chevy Silverado 1500 at a local dealership. It had been used as a work truck and it certainly showed, but it wasn't all that old and it was the new body style, which I am actually a pretty big fan of. So in November of 2013 I ended up trading in the Ford Expedition and putting a few thousand on top of that to drive away with this Silverado. Over the coming weeks and months and years, it became clear that the quality appearance of the truck is a bit of a thin veneer as problems began to surface. But since the truck basically came without a warranty, I did start modifying it pretty much straight away. The first thing I installed was this brush guard, which some people prefer to call a damage multiplier because in traffic accidents it can cause more damage than it prevents. But it has been handy for pushing things around, standing on, and eventually mounting lights to. I also installed the weather guard visors onto the windows, which have actually really come in useful. Then I bolted on these brush guards for the tail lights and put on the big Chevrolet tailgate decal these trucks should have come with from the factory. The next thing I installed was this LED high mount stoplight, which was actually my first car related YouTube video. The tail light that had come on the truck was badly cracked and leaked water. I replaced it with this fairly cheap aftermarket one, but ended up having at least as many problems with it as with the original light. So sooner or later, I'd really like to swap it back for a factory one. This truck has a weird selection of options and doesn't really fit into any of the standard packages. I assume it was a special order. It's an extended cab, 6.5 foot bed, with the 4.8 liter V8 engine, a 4L60 automatic transmission, and floor shifted 4 wheel drive. But it also has manual locks and windows. I don't really care for the look of the 20 inch wheels that came on it, and they weren't even the original ones. I also didn't care for the stance of the vehicle. The rear end sits much higher than the front. Of course a little bit of rake is desirable in a pickup truck with an empty bed, but I found it to be a little excessive. I did some research and came up with these as the best wheel and tire combination I could find for my price range. There are 17 inch Mickey Thompson Classic 3s and 28570 Super Swampers. I went for an aggressive tire because I had big plans for what I wanted to do with this truck. To help fit these tires, we installed a leveling kit to help raise the front of the vehicle about an inch and a half. And I was finally happy with the look and the stance of the vehicle. In hindsight, I kind of wish I had left things here. It was a good combination of parts and still looked pretty modest. Over the years I tacked on a few parts that I ended up with mixed feelings about. But this isn't the story of how I wish I had done things, this is the story of what happened. Pretty soon after that, me and a friend set out to change all of the fluids on the vehicle. We changed the oil in both of the differentials, which is a good thing because it didn't look great. The oil always looked good and the transmission fluid looked fine, but the transfer case had a bit of a surprise in store. The first time we removed the magnetic transfer case plug, it looked like this. That is quite a bit of metal. We refilled the transfer case and changed it again a couple days later. This was the result of the second oil change. There is even more metal still in there. We also pulled out some small plastic pieces, which I later learned were the pads on the shift fork. I had read online that transfer cases like to shed a lot of metal from new chains and I assumed that this was the original transfer case fluid, so we just cleaned everything up, refilled it, and kind of forgot about it. At some point along the line I noticed some leakage from one of the wheel cylinders, so I replaced both. I eventually decided I wasn't happy with the sound of the exhaust. So I replaced the factory muffler and tailpipe with a Gibson dual exit side exhaust. The idle has a really nice sound and it isn't too loud at higher RPMs. The pipes are supposed to sit straight and I never took the time to bend things and try to correct that so it still sits at a bit of an angle. I do like the sound, but in hindsight, things would have been just fine without replacing that exhaust. 
At this point, I had owned the truck for around six months, and it had served me very well. But I still wanted to modify it more. Since I was little, I had always loved the light bars and roll bars on pickup trucks. So when these came up for sale on Craigslist fairly nearby, with lights, for a decent price, I ended up going for it. Before installing those, I removed the plastic bed liner the dealer had installed, and found out exactly how bad of a shape the bed was in. I don't have any pictures from before I started working on it, but this is after two days of sanding and hammering and grinding everything to get it as flat as possible. I ended up filling some of the dents with fiberglass body filler and priming the entire bed as well as applying some roll-on bed liner. Then I drilled a bunch of holes, ran a bunch of wires, and installed the light bar. At around the same time, I also installed these cab lights, which are aftermarket ones, but designed to look like the markers on Dodge trucks. I wanted them simply because I liked the way they looked. At the same time I wired the light bar, I also wired four additional lights to attach to the brush guard on the front of the truck. Between the headlights, the four lights on the front, and the four lights on the back, this thing can put out a ridiculous amount of light. I ended up not putting any facing backwards, because the lights up top are so bright they reflect off of the roof and light up everything in a 30 foot radius around the truck. I also made sure to design the lights to be easily removable for times that I might need to park in a garage. Over a few more months, I continued to put the truck through its paces, but eventually got sick of how bad the tires rub when turning and decided to cut a few inches off the bottom of the front bumper. It had the cheap plastic trim and it was a little damaged, so I didn't feel too bad about it. I made some cardboard templates and then cut pieces of sheet aluminum so that I could bolt covers on beneath the bumpers to keep out excess mud and road debris. And it wasn't long after that, in October of 2014, we installed a trailer hitch receiver to the truck and went on a little road trip to pick up my 78 Firebird. At this point, I still had the 20 inch wheels, so I installed them to save a little bit of the tread life on the other tires. After that drive, I reinstalled the Mickey Thompson wheels, sold the 20 inch ones, and then went a few years without any more substantial modifications to the truck. I eventually took the steps off because they kept picking up sticks in the yard and on gravel and dirt roads. They might end up back on the truck at some point because they do have their uses. One day, the passenger side headlight just stopped working. I unplugged the connector and found that it had melted. Something about how enclosed it is or maybe some weird wiring thing, but I did find other reports of this online. I simply replaced the connector with a ceramic one intended for HIDs and haven't had any more issues. It treated me well for on-road and off-road driving, as well as going through some water that was definitely deeper than what I should have driven through. Throughout the summers and the winters, it happily served as a utility vehicle and didn't mind getting a little dirty. It also ended up towing a few more vehicles, including everything from multiple Miatas, a Supra, and an S10 Blazer. It seemed pretty content to put up with all the crap I put it through. including one time when I got it stuck two feet deep in the mud. I did what I could to try to get it unstuck and broke a couple wooden boards in the process, but in the end I had to call for help and get another vehicle to pull me out. It made a hell of a mess. Until this day, the frame cross members are still full of rocks that I haven't been able to remove. But luckily I was still able to drive it home, and once everything was cleaned out, especially the brake calipers, it was back on the road and happy to be there. A while later, one of the wheel bearings ended up in pretty bad shape. And I replaced both of them. I also ended up having to replace the lower ball joints. If I had to guess, I'd say all these parts were damaged from repeated instances of water ingress. This truck has gotten me through a few snowstorms, even though one time I did get overconfident and ended up packing a bunch of snow beneath the frame and getting it stuck in my own driveway. But it continued to carry out its duties as daily transportation and a utility vehicle. But eventually, that thin veneer of quality that I mentioned earlier started to wear thin. I noticed the fenders on the bed were rusting through the paint. 
I ground off some of the paint and noticed a large portion of the outside of the bed is coated in Bondo. And that wheel well area is starting to rust a fair bit on both sides of the sheet metal. I kind of lazily painted over it as a temporary fix, and for a while I tried out these Plasti Dip stripes on the bed to kind of cover it up. They were a little gaudy, but I really didn't hate the look of them. But the biggest concern is that the truck started to act funny in reverse. One day I was backing up a steep hill in reverse, there was a massive clunk, the whole vehicle shook, but then it kept going. I got out and looked to see if there was a big hole in the side of something underneath the truck, but I didn't see anything wrong. This problem persisted for the next two and a half years, getting worse and worse over time. Eventually it got to the point where I couldn't give it any gas in reverse without this clunk happening. The only way for me to reverse up hills or on uneven surfaces was to put the transfer case in four low and crawl. I couldn't really find any information out about this, so at the time I was pretty convinced it was the splines stripping out of the sunshell in the transmission, but I kept on driving it anyway. We used the truck for all manner of things over the next couple of months until it finally showed up in the first car series on this channel when we used it to tow the Datsun 280 the Silverado's inability to reverse and the S10 Blazer's traction failure ended up in the situation where we dropped the Datsun off the side of the trailer. After that, I decided its towing days were over until the issue was fixed. Over the next year, the Silverado was used less and less as I drove the Firebird and the Blazer more and more. The truck would still see use now and then, but more often than not, it would end up just sitting around because of that reversing problem. On one occasion while reversing, it seemed to slip out of gear and I could hear metal grinding sounds until I put the transmission into park. At this point, I had purchased parts to rebuild the transmission and already had made plans to do so. But as one last hurrah, we needed to transport this engine and transmission that we were pulling out of a car. Everything earlier in the day went fine, but when driving home on the highway that night, two times the truck slipped out of gear and we heard that loud metal grinding noise that I had heard in reverse before. I drove it the rest of the way home and parked it in the driveway. And that is where it sat with the engine and transmission still in the back for the next few months. This truck has come a long way in the five years I've owned it, and we've been through so much together it hurts me to see it disabled. It became a glorified storage container until April of this year when I was finally ready to attempt the repair. It's not going to be an easy process, and it definitely won't be a short one. So stay tuned for the next couple of episodes where we're going to take a very detailed look at tearing this truck apart and getting it back on the road.